Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the Triumph Factory Visitor Experience here in Hinkley. And I am stood next to the new Triumph Daytona 660, a bike which really took most of us by surprise as I was at the launch of the last Triumph Daytona in 2019 at Silverstone. And that was, of course, the Daytona 765 Moto 2 Edition. And at that time, Triumph's design team, they assured me, they promised me that that would be the final edition of the Triumph Daytona that the public would be able to go out and buy. Turns out that was a little bit of a white lie because I'm stood here in front of this new Daytona 660. But this returning name to the Triumph range, it's kind of come about because there's been a bit of a resurgence in the sports bike world. So instead of screaming in line four cylinder sports bikes, we've started to see bikes like the Yamaha R7, the Aprilia RS660, the Honda CBR650R and the Kawasaki Ninja 650 sort of come into the fore and they've started to put themselves back into the sports bikes charts. That that has kind of turned Triumph to look at one of their existing models, the Triumph 660. It's kind of set them down a road where they wanted to figure out if they could turn it into a sports bike and make it a success. So I'm going to go through the bike in a bit more detail for you now and I'm going to start with really what's different between this model and the Trident 660 which it shares some of its parts with. So first and foremost the engine. It is the same 660cc engine that is found in the Trident although to say it's the same is to be doing it a bit of a disservice. Triumph have done a lot of work to make this engine more sports focused. So this has got three throttle bodies as opposed to the single throttle body of the Trident. It's got more power, it's got more torque, it's got 80% of its torque available available above 3000 rpm in the rev range so it's really tuned for road riding it's got bigger exhaust valves it's got different valve gear it's got different cams it's got different pistons it's got different combustion chamber as you can hear there's quite a lot that's gone on inside that engine to really create a sports bike out of the little trident 660. chassis wise there has also been quite a lot done to it so this bike has got a slightly steeper front end so the geometry at the front has been changed to give it a steeper rate to make it a little bit sharper turning into corners and it's also got a slightly longer wheelbase than the Trident 660. You've got Showa big piston forks which are separate function forks and you've got a Showa balance free rear cushion. There isn't any adjustability on, on the bike as it stands at the moment but Triumph assures us that it has tuned it for road riding not chasing down apexes on a racetrack. That's quite an important point because when it comes to these sort of road going super sports bikes that are kind of charging their way up the charts at the moment in the UK and Europe. It isn't the really, really focused ones that are succeeding. Yes, Honda has brought back the CBR 600 RR just recently this year, but really the bikes that are selling well are the ones that are a little bit more relaxed, so a little bit more compliant, and they are tuned for riding on the road and not on the track. And that is where this bike has come from. That's why it's come about, and that is where Triumph are really pinning this one as a road-going sports bike, not an out-and-out -out track weapon. So I'm going to talk about the braking system very quickly. We've got a two-channel ABS overall, and at the front we have got four-pot radially mounted calipers. They are branded up as Triumph, and Triumph went to a leading brake manufacturer to get those developed specifically for this bike. The technology front, I just mentioned the ABS, so you will notice there is no cornering ABS on this bike, and that has been done because there aren't many other bikes in the segment that have got cornering ABS fitted to them, and also because it allows Triumph to keep the price of this bike down. And as you're going to find out at the end of the video, this thing is actually very good value for money. Further technology that you've got, you've got three riding modes. You've got road, rain, and sport mode, a standard traction control system, so no lean sensitive uh, traction control, but you do get the option to add a quick shifter if you want. There is also another piece of technology that you can add to the bike if you so wish, and that is a Bluetooth connectivity module. So this bike has got a split TFT and LCD hybrid dash, very similar to the one found on the Tiger Sport 660 and also the Trident 660. You can add the Bluetooth connectivity module and that will then allow you to to answer calls, it will allow you to change music through the switch gear and other things. But because the TFT element of the dash is quite small, it doesn't include any kind of full screen mapping or anything like that. 
Another new addition to this bike is the emergency brake lights. Now I first saw these and encountered them on the Tiger 900 launch that I was on a couple of weeks ago. And what they effectively do is when the ABS is triggered, the rear indicators will flash to signify that the bike is slowing down rapidly. Now, because we've seen it on the Tiger and now we've seen it on this bike, I would say that that's probably nailed on that that is gonna be an inclusion on pretty much every Triumph model going forwards from here on in. So, what have we got? We've got a road focus sports bike. We've got different geometry to anything else in the Trident range. We've got an engine that is completely exclusive to this new model. We've got 95 horsepower and we have got 69 newton meters of torque with 80% of that torque available from 8,250 RPM. A lot of you will be asking yourself why we have got a Daytona but why doesn't it have a 765cc engine just like the one that we lost in 2019. The simple fact is I think they're trying to think that if they put the 765 unit in this it would change it from a road going sports bike to an out and out track sports bike which I just don't think they've got the confidence in the market at the moment to be able to make that move it is a big step and there are currently only really two bikes in that segment the kawasaki zx6 r ninja and the returning honda cbr 600 rr that's not a very big pool of competition to go and play with so until that market changes and there's a few other brands already in there or the sales start to uh, spike rapidly i don't see triumph ever bringing back that 765 cc daytona not for now anyway so there we have it, the Daytona 660. It is an iconic name in the Triumph range and it is back for 2024. These bikes are gonna be rolling into dealerships in March 2024 and the list price for this bike is 8,595 pounds. That means that it actually undercuts most of the other bikes in this segment, including the R7, the CBR 650R and the Aprilia RS 660. The only bike that is cheaper than this bike in that little super sport segment is the Ninja 650. But that again, even compared to this is a very different proposition. It's got a much lower state of tune, it's much more relaxed, and it feels a lot more like a naked bike with a fairing slapped on. Having looked around this thing today, this thing does look like a proper little sports bike. There is gonna be a launch for it. I think it's at the end of March, just before the bikes are gonna be landing in dealers in the UK. So if you are interested in this bike, get yourself over to visedown.com. There is a full write-up and preview of it over on the website. And if you wanted to find out a little bit more of a place to deposit, you can speak to your local Triumph dealer as of now. If you've liked that video, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of Visedown's latest videos. And for all the latest news, reviews, and motorcycle features, get yourself over to visedown.com.